my fast when I when I take the the whey protein and the supplements? Am I, am I breaking the fast or am I keeping the ketones going when I'm you know, fasting? You know, to the extent. You're not going to affect the ketones all that much with just whey protein and supplements. Supplements aren't going to affect it at all. But the whey protein will affect it a little bit, uh, but not much. There's some sugar, you know, lactose in the whey protein, but right, right. not much. And you know what? I get that question a lot. How do you fast? It, look, it, it doesn't really matter. If you want to eat, eat. If you don't want to eat, don't. If you can eat, if you can avoid eating, that's probably best. But if you have to have something to eat, it's not going to be the end of the world. The, the point is, is that you want to calm the digestive system down. Give it a break. If you give it 99% of a holiday, that's better than, you know, nothing. Or if you give it 95%, 94%, it's, the more you fast, the, the less you eat, the better off you're going to be. Okay. Well, okay. Thank, you, thank you so much on that. Uh, the question is, you, you mentioned all the time about, about the history of uh, food empires. Yeah, and and the pharmaceutical and how they came how came to be in America. Yeah, and I, can you? I, I'm just so interested in in studying that the, the history the side of it and how it became. How, how do you recommend any books or any teachers I can follow? Or, about how about the relationship of food and, and empire and cultures and all that. There's a great book called Empires yeah. of Food. A real easy. Yeah. A real. Have you heard of that book, Empires of Food? I forgot who wrote I think it. That's maybe what, I've heard you mention it before. It's one of my favorites. I forgot who wrote it though, and it tr it tracks it tracks the history of empire with the history of grains. You know, the first empire was the Sumerian Empire, and that's an, a story in and of itself. How this empire just sprouted out out of the middle of nowhere in the middle of Sumeria, which is the desert, basically. You know, the, where Iraq is and Syria and all those countries where everybody's, you know, complaining and, and causing so much trouble today. That was the first empire, and it appeared out of nowhere. Now, if you listen to George Norrie or, or you know, p folks who study these things, there's some reasons why it appeared out of nowhere, but that's a, past the scope of this program, as fascinating as it is. The point is, is that it was, it was the first grain culture. The, the Tigris and the Euphrates, they figured out how to irrigate the desert, basically, with the two, with the Tigris and the Euphrates River. Rivers, and they they enslaved the people because the people didn't you know digging ditches is not exactly what people want to do, so they created empires and police and military and all of these kinds of things hier a hierarchical structure with a king and with priests, and it was all designed in order to get the people to do the do the the leaders bidding the elites bidding, especially around farming and agriculture and irrigation etc. And then it proceeded to the Persian Empire and the Greek Empire and the Roman Empire and the Chinese Empire well, and all. All these were empires of food. They were all grain empires uh, up until the British Empire and, and then finally the American Empire. You know, all of these empires were associated with grains and with food for a lot of reasons. Number one, they were a source of calories. So if you could control the food, you could control ca the people's calories. Obviously, that's going to be important. But number two, grains have a dumbing down effect. Grains make you, make you sleepy. Grains have a pain relieving effect. Comfort foods are grains. So they got to control the people and they got to uh, control their food all in one fell swoop, and this is how empires began. The relationship between grains and empires is inextricably linked throughout history, which is one reason why you want to be very skeptical about food recommendations from governments when they suggest that you eat grains. It's part of the... Uh, the there's an element of slavery associated with grains, with grain farming, and with grain ingestion. Well, so, I, ben, Yes, sir. Well, you know, there's, there's religious tyranny, too, I hear you There is about. all of that, absolutely. Religion and I'm government. Interested, I'm interested in studying these, these tyrannies and how, how, they, how they grow to be. And, and oh, there's so anything. many places you can go. You know, the Internet's full of stuff. You've got to kind of weed through, and you've got to get, you know, you got to... The way you want to do research is you don't want to believe everything you see, but you want to kind of start to notice trends and start to form theories based on the trends and based on the facts. Jordan Maxwell, do you know who Jordan Maxwell is? I think he's written no, about no. it. This Michael Tessarian's written a lot about this stuff. There you uh, go. You know, if I'll you want to just look, yeah, research Michael Tessarian, T S A R I O N, Jordan Maxwell. Uh, there's probably a few other ones. I'm, you know, there's other people I'm missing. I don't, I don't really know the names that well. Those, those two guys are very famous. Anyway, I got to move on. Ken, thanks okay, so much I'll, for your call. I'll send, I'll, I'll, send I'll, me I'll, your address. Email. I appreciate that, brother Ben. Thank you so God much. God bless you, man. Good luck. Happy holidays to you and Bye your family. Bye. Thanks. All right, Rose in Virginia. What's going on? How you doing, Rose? Hi, uh, I'm okay. Thank you. I'm calling for Stephen because um, at first I wanted to ask you. Thank you for reminding. This thing of arugula, because I'm an advocate of arugula. But arugula is awesome. 
It's high in iron, but I didn't know it was high in 03. And I'm always telling the people, instead of uh, taking a finish, I, if I were you, I would take a, a rubula because They're both high. good. They're both good. You got to yeah, steam but, them a little bit if, if you really want to do it. I would steam them because they got those phytates yeah. in there that can tie up minerals. But they're still great. And they're great at the beginning of meals. They stimulate your digestive juices, bitters like arugula and parsley and uh, dandelion greens, etc. They'll stimulate your digestive juices. So they're especially good if you had a gallbladder missing or I know you have some digestive things going on, Rose. It's great to start off your meals with those, um, those bitters, they call them, or bitter greens. Well, the problem is like in my case that I need to have a that high diet and iron, I know for sure because I've done the research, the spinach leaches iron. So, and I learned that with you too. Remember, you you said it the other day, we have learned so many things. Um, I wanted to ask you, I noticed, and I'm not saying this in a critical way, just as a reminder, when you mentioned that A, to take A and E, I learned D. this with a, yeah, a and with D. vitamin huh? I said A and D, not A and E. A and, yeah. They go together. A and D go together. A and D, okay. Because when we take E, you know, I'm, oh, we should always remember that E is comes in the A forms, you know. Eight different I, forms, that's right. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank you for the correction of the D. I, I guess I missed. I didn't hear you correctly. Yeah, A and um, D go together. A and D go together. Okay. Now, A and E have some interesting anti-estrogen properties, so they kind of, they're, they're together in a certain way. But A and D are, are two vitamins that you want to think about as taking together. They're, horm they're the only hormone vitamins. Yeah, my question about Steve is this. Steve, you know, I may have to ask him to call you, uh, but he has been having some spots in his stomach. Spots and, in his stomach? Yeah, and... Or his belly, in the skin, you mean, on the outside, on his belly? Right, yeah. Yeah, are they red? Or what color? Red, it's on the side. On the side of his belly, it's a red spot? Yeah, the red spot, so I may have him to call you. You better have him call me. Now, you want to, that's not a, that's a symptom. That's not a problem. That's a sign of a problem. So you want to look for other, other problems. Whenever you have something that just appears out of the middle of nowhere and you can't really link it to anything, you want to start to collect various symptoms. Collect the dots and then connect the dots. So you got to look for other symptoms. And most important are going to be digestive symptoms and then also problems with blood sugar. If you feel tired after meals, for example, or you're constantly hungry, those can be signs of hypoglycemia following, usually following some kind of digestive health issue. I'd always be looking at the digestive system first, Rose. And I think, as I recall, Steve did have some problems that way. But have him call me Thank or call you. back Call back tomorrow. That, we're out of time. All right. Thanks for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Check out my website, brightsideben.com, or our blogs, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase Longevity products right off the site. And don't forget about truthtreatments.com for your skin health treatment products. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now.